Shortly after my 20th birthday, I got a call from a good friend that called me to help chaperone a teenage lock-in. I was out of church. I wasn't walking with the Lord. I was, I was out of my faith. But I said, okay, I'll, I'll go. So I came, and I'm sitting in the back row as disconnected as I can make myself from what's going on up front when he's preaching. You ever been there? You know, you're there, but you're not there. And you try somehow to take yourself away because you're afraid that God might convict your heart and it might try to pull you back in again. And you've been doing everything you can. And I've been doing everything I can for the last four years to keep him out here. And I sat there and the young preacher preached from Psalms and he preached a verse that said, Oh God, be not silent, be not quiet, be not still. And I sat there on the back row and I found myself wiping the tears off my face. And my knuckles were white and my hands were cold. And in so many ways, God said, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> and it broke me completely because in everything that had ever happened in my life, God was the only thing that had never failed me ever. And I don't know why I do, did it. I don't know why we do it. But every time He wants to pull us close, we push Him away. And for me, I was afraid. But I don't know what I was afraid of. That's the crazy thing. If you ask me the question of what's the worst that can happen, I don't know. I'll be a preacher and God blesses my life <laughs> beyond anything I could ever imagine. I think that's a Bible verse, something like that, about being blessed. Was I, running from, was I running from what God would do here? <laughs> I don't know. No, there's no way. But I don't know why I did it, and you probably don't know why you do it either, but for some reason in our lives when God tries to get too close, we do this because it has a lot to do with last week's message because we're still trying to hold on to what's left of us. I've heard the saints of old say that the Lord's timing is perfect. And I guess they're right. Because when I decided to come back to Him, I found Him exactly where I left Him. <laughs> With His arms open wide, trying to pull me in, trying to bless my life, and when I came back, I could never figure out for the life of me, and I still can't, why I pushed him away in the first place. Do you realize that so many times in our life, we talk about waiting for the Lord, when in reality, He's the one that's waiting for us. <laughs> and over and over in His Word, He tells us in so many different ways that He's there and that He's waiting and that He's never left and that He never will. But we have all this talk and all these thoughts and feelings and prayers about God, show Yourself to us. And He says, I'm right here. Even though you run and even though you push Him away and even though every time He gets close, you back away, even though you have sin in your life, even though you've turned your back on Him, who knows how many times or for how long, yet He longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, He will rise up to show you compassion. Don't you feel good, man? He will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for Him. And there's some irony in that that I'm going to get to in just a minute. Blessed are all who wait for Him. People of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious He will be when you cry for help. As soon as He hears, He will answer you. You know what's ironic about that is it says, blessed are all who wait for Him, but then it goes on to say, as soon as He hears, He answers. So even though it says, blessed are you when you wait for Him, it basically says when you call on Him, He's already there. So even though it says, blessed are those who wait for Him, He's the one waiting for you. Think of all in your life that you're not proud of.
Yet, the Lord longs to be gracious to you. And when you call, as soon as He hears, He answers you. <laughs> 